Hello everyone and welcome and thank you for joining us for our webinar Replacing FSGs and Discovery Reports. So today's speakers are Balwant Badran from the Adra Housing Group and Julie Bowen from InsightSoftware.com. So without further ado, Jules, over to you. Hi everyone, thank you for joining. Um, a lot of people on today's webinar will actually know me. I'm um, the lead person for Oracle Financials in the UK at InsightSoftware.com. I'm from a management accounting background. I'm a qualified SEMA accountant and I've been with Insight now for about eight years. Um, Bal, would you like to tell us a little bit about your role at Asra Housing Group? Yeah, um, good afternoon everybody. Um, my name's Bal Basran. I'm currently the Head of Financial Systems and Management Accounts at the Asra Housing Group. I'm an ACCA qualified accountant. I've worked in the Oracle world for over 10 years and worked in many management accounts teams, systems teams, IT teams across um, the country over the past 10 years. Great, great. So for the people on today's webinar that don't know about Astra Housing Group, can you tell us just a little bit about the company? Yeah, um, um, we're a not-for-profit organisation. Um, we're a housing and regeneration provider. Uh, currently we have 13,000 properties across the Midlands and London. Uh, revenues in excess of 60 million each year. Our head office is in Leicester, we have regional offices in London, Northampton and Nottingham. Great, great. I mean obviously um, most people read the papers and, and, sit and see, see news on the TV and at the moment in the media there's, it's saying what a huge demand there is for social housing due to the, the, the financial um, problems that people are having. This must put a lot of pressure on your business and especially the finance function when obviously people are asking for information and up-to-date information all the time presumably. It is especially sort of coming out of the credit crunch and the financial crisis that we've been through sort of being sort of a, a large amount of regulatory change now with uh, people hearing on the news which is sort of welfare reforms uh, universal credit. So obviously the demand for social housing has increased which means that basically the information that's required from finance has increased as well basically saving tenants, landlords and service providers. Um, so the finance function we've been at Oracle 11 I for over five years. Um, basically Oracle was initially implemented because of its database functionality and facilities because it's known as the best database system in the world yeah. to be honest with you. Reporting and inquiry uh, not so great. Yeah, absolutely, and I think a lot of people will agree with that. Um, you say you're on Oracle 11i. Um, were you using the standard Oracle reporting tools when you were on that platform? Um, the, or the, the standard reports we used were the FSG reports, but we also used, uh, used Oracle Discoverer. Um, and the problem sort of we sort of felt and I felt is basically users couldn't answer their own questions. They were reliant on myself as well as IT to set up Oracle Discoverer reports. Um, those people sort of listening in, anyone that's used Oracle Discoverer, it, it's, it, you've got to have a very technical knowledge, you've got to understand the different tables, the, the, the database fields, and basically we had 50 plus key reports with countless iterations, and, um, and I felt it was inflexible, and basically all the skills l lied with me, to be honest, basically if anybody wanted any reports or, or changes to reports, they all used to sort of contact myself, and Discoverer, as everybody knows, there's no sort of drill down um, uh, facility. And also, um, it's a big black hole. Basically, you're taking data, extracting uh, standard reports from Oracle, taking them into Excel as text, and then data formatting them, etc., etc., within Excel. Um, and those FSG users out there, obviously, it's, it's a bit of a sort of a difficulty task. Obviously, moving on to R12, it's all about Web ADI, and it's sort of problematic within sort of Windows and Excel 2010. Yeah, I think there's a couple of good points there, actually. Um, obviously, a lot of people take information out into, into spreadsheets to manipulate that data. Um, but that breaks a link to the database, which is obviously not ideal. So if you want to manipulate those figures and, and drill down on those figures, you've completely cut the link back to Oracle. And I think another thing that we tend to find with organisations when, when we go and talk to people or talk to people at shows is that a lot of these skills, because they're quite old tools, Discoverer and FSG reports, tend to lie with a very small number of people in the organisation. So um, when you initially set Oracle up five or six or ten years ago, um, you'll have had a core number of people that could actually use Discoverer and FSGs and sometimes those people have actually left the organisation and so you're actually effectively working with reports that were designed to do a job when the organisation's actually moved on. So based on what you were just saying about um, Discover and FSGs, how did you think this affected the business? 
Uh, one of the one of the biggest problems, was, as I mentioned earlier, is uh, Jules, is that basically it became a bit of a bottleneck. If I was on annual leave or was out the business on sort of uh, sort of conferences or meetings, it basically uh, people were, uh, didn't have the ability to answer sort of ad hoc queries or sort of bespoke queries, and it basically meant sort of finance were constant constantly answering calls from users because the information wasn't there. And it made that sort of business and end user became very, very frustrated. And what that meant was a, a, a negative impression on the finance function, not that we don't want to help. Basically, the, the people didn't have the tools or the systems to be able to answer the questions. And that's what, you, what, that's what I've seen with sort of Oracle, is you always need an add-on tool. And basically, the standard functionality, it, it, it doesn't provide um, what we require basically now nowadays everybody wants real-time information mm. and be and, and the ability to get down to the core information not only a, a summary level but basically the respective details yeah and i think that frustration is frustration from the people asking for the information because i've been on both sides of the fence and then but also there's a frustration from your finance team because they're a really nice bunch of guys but they can't react to the business so um it just doesn't set everybody um feeling nice about things and at this point, we've actually um, got a polling question to help us understand um, how how you're using Discover as an FSGs um, on the call today. Lovely, Jules. So the question is, how do FSGs and Discover impact your business? Um, so this is a multiple choice um, question, so please tick all that do apply to your business. So answers are longer month end close, delayed answers to business questions, data integrity issues, um, reliance on IT, and less time to focus on data analysis. So if you'd like to um, answer that poll and I shall reveal the results. Great, thank you very much everyone. Just closing that now and sharing the results. Right, well the um, resounding highest score is definitely um, a reliance on IT and I'm assuming that a lot of people on the call today are actually from a finance from the finance function, and if you if you haven't got the capabilities to write your own discovery reports, it can lead to huge amounts of frustration that you have to then go to somebody to call in a favour to get something, which really you know you've put the information into Oracle, but you just can't get it out. So thank you very much for that. It's really useful information for us. So Val, um, you upgraded to R12 in 2012, aptly. Um, were, did you find the standard reports were any better when you moved? Um, basically, they were worse. <laughs> so, <laughs> um, funny enough, but basically, everyone that sort of looks at sort of upgrade path onto R12, you can see that all the reports, all the pre-existing uh, information, it states that there is a lack of reporting, and it's always sort of pointing towards Oracle OBIE, etc., or other reporting tools to get the answers. Um, so just to sort of go back to you sort of mentioned, Jules, that we went on to R12. Um, the key reason we went on to R12 is obviously from an audit perspective, we wanted to be supported and we didn't want to pay the premium, yeah. uh, premium support charges because obviously, as everybody understands, that uh, 11, 5, 10, etc. was going to be de-supported and you have to pay the premium. So obviously that made, left us no choice. So we, obviously we didn't move on to R12 because of the reporting. It made a lack of reporting, to be honest with you, because what it meant is after we implemented R12, directors and the business as a whole we're coming back to saying that look you've made this investment into a technical upgrade onto r12 but what has it brought what benefits has it brought the business and basically it didn't bring anything basically we had a hundred managers still requiring answers there was still no visibility in the business back to our core data and it meant recreating sort of existing reports within web adi which made it a bit, bit more even difficult to be honest with you yeah i mean and that is that is a very familiar story that we're hearing that if, if businesses are investing a huge amount of money in an upgrade, um, rightly so, the people that are funding it you want to see some, yeah. want to see some business benefits, and it's yes. very hard to do that if you're not actually going to bolt something yes. on to actually get better information out. So, when you actually sat down, realised you were going to look at reporting, um, what were your requirements from um, a reporting tool that were important to the Azra Group? I think one of the, one of the fundamental uh, requirements for, from myself and the group was we wanted real time information. We didn't want no data warehouse. We wanted information that basically, if a journal's posted or an invoice is paid within Oracle Financials, I wanted the ability to run a report or one of my members of the team to run a report and that showed up within that report straight away. 
and basically we wanted something flexible, something sort of reports to meet business requirements. It's not one of those things that we've got inflexible reports. We wanted to take one report, uh, have the ability to amend it, change it however we wanted to. It's not one of those structured things that we wanted. And another thing, we wanted something that was intuitive. Basically all finances users be able to create their own reports because the, the aim of the uh, sort of implementing uh, Insight Unlimited was to empower the user base so everybody could have had the ability to answer their own questions. Obviously that's led us on now, obviously we've implemented um, Insight Unlimited. Obviously now we're looking at rolling this out to all uh, uh, budget managers across the group as well. So we've got just got um, the second of our three polling questions, Amy. Yeah, sure. So how many people in your organisation are responsible for building and managing reports? Um, so um, answers are one or two to five or six or more. Okay, another couple of seconds to just collect those answers. Thank you very much for your participation today. Okay, just closing that now. Okay, well, th thank you everybody for that. Um, I think the resounding um, the results are that the, the key to writing these reports lies with the very few number of people in the organisation. Obviously, the number of people you've got writing the discovery reports will depend on the size of the organisation that you're in. But um, this tends to um, sit with a very small group, so the larger Oracle user base don't have any control over that. So, um, when you looked at um, Insight Unlimited, can you tell us um, about the demo or your initial impression of the software? Um, so, I think the, the biggest sort of impression that was made was that Insight Unlimited sort of produced done a demo on our real data on Azure Housing Group's data. So basically Jules and a colleague came in and they produced reports on our sort of data. There is a profit and loss income expenditure report. And, and and basically when you got the wide range of audience sitting within that room, we had the finance director, you had myself, we had the management accounts team, you had accounts payable, accounts receivable. Straight away all the users were sort of saying to me after the demo, when can we buy this? It's one of those things instantaneously people could see the advantages. So all those sort of frust frustrated uh, users could see straight away from day one after the demo that basically we had the ability to sort of empower ourselves and get the questions and answers to what we wanted from Oracle. Yeah, great. I mean, when we did the um, proof of concept with you, I remember your IT director sitting there wanting to know how many purchase orders had been raised mm. against his yeah. department and what was still outstanding. And he was absolutely amazed when we could actually just produce that information mm. really, really quickly and simply in a matter of seconds. And I think this is one of the unique um, things about Insight Unlimited. Um, the software does install very quickly, so um, we always encourage people to actually see it on their data because us showing you something on our standard demo data probably means very little, but to actually see real numbers coming back that reflect your organisational structure and your hierarchies and accounts and segments um, really turns um, sort of a static presentation into something very, very interactive. So, um, you implemented, you, you purchased Insight Unlimited, obviously, um, in 2012. Can you just explain a little bit about the process that you, you went through after, after that purchase was complete? Obviously, obviously, once you sort of made the purchase, we were live within our first day. So obviously, uh, the technical people team came in one person and sort of applied the software onto our servers. And basically, straight away, once it was applied, all users were live. Basically, we had two days training, which we split. Um, we've currently got 11 reporting users and obviously from six to eight weeks since uh, we went live all the Discover and FSG reports were replaced. So basically what we're doing now is we're using um, Oracle to sort of post journals, make payments, but all our inquiries and reporting is currently all done from Insight Unlimited. So all users currently have the ability to run their own reports, build their reports, run inquiries, create ad hoc queries. And basically, queries are sort of dealt within minutes rather than hours. Just as an example, sort of management, my management accounts team, we had uh, a colleague sort of phone her up sort of earlier this week. Somebody wanted further information on all um, temporary staff costs. And basically, instead of having to sort of say, oh, we'll come back to you, uh, the, the query was dealt with over the phone and the information sort of straight away drilled down using Insight Unlimited, and they got closed. Rather than sort of that to go on someone's to-do list, etc., etc. It, it was dealt with there and then. Um, basically, and the management have been very, very impressed. Basically, the fast turnaround on accounts, um, sort of detailed reports, 
And basically, when it means that you know where our financial sort of um, environment is changing on a daily basis, we require real time information, which sort of aids in sort of more proactive decision making when we're sort of looking at value for money. Basically, this sort of gives us to, we're at the forefront now. Basically, we can answer our questions there and then. And obviously, as you can see, see my quote at the end. So sort of when you move away from sort of FSUs and just discover it, you can't remember how you ever coped without it. To be honest with you. Yeah, and I think obviously your management team are now seeing like some real payback from the investment that you made in Oracle because you're enabling you're ena enabled to get the information out a lot quicker. And it's great, you know, I came to your offices last week and I walk yeah. around and, and most people have got insight open on their desktop because yeah. that's what they're doing. They're inquiring yeah. on the data and unless you're, like you said, yeah. inputting data, why would you actually um, go into Oracle? So I think what you were going to do now is um, just show us two or three of your um, key reports on the ASRA Group's data. So um, we're connecting back from our offices back to... Okay. So, now, database, so. so if I sort of quickly log in back into sort of Insight Limited, um, so obviously this is the sort of uh, initial Insight screen, and obviously what you can see it's a very before I sort of go into any sort of reporting. Obviously you can see it's a very very familiar sort of Office uh, Word Excel. So obviously you can see the toolbar across the top, and basically before I run the report, obviously what you can see is that at the top you've got company department scheme account, and basically this relates back to your chart of accounts. So whatever your segment structure is. This will sort of mirror your segment structure if you've got scheme, department, or any other sort of different iterations of that. This mirrors basically your chart of accounts from Oracle Financials. Um, basically, this is a, 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 an income expenditure report, or otherwise known as a profit and loss in, in, in the private sector. And obviously, what this provides is, is a full detailed breakdown of your expenditure. Basically, I'll show you the summary version. And what you can do, these reports, obviously, where you can see where I'm scrolling, if you, I've run this for one of our company segments. But what you could do, if you wanted to, you could run it for a group. Or alternatively, if you wanted, you could run it for one department or a group of departments, one or a number of different schemes using a hierarchy. Um, so basically, so this is where you've got the totals, obviously, so, uh, top summary level. So basically, and what you've got the ability to do now is sort of go down. Obviously, we've got sub subcategory salaries, capitalization, depreciation. So, if it, so I'll just show you a quick example. If you look at uh, overheads, we could sort of go down and drill back into our sub ledgers. Um, let's sort of pick one. So if I say public relations, about 11,719. I wanted to see what the makeup of is it. Is it accounts payable invoices? Is it journals? Um, let's sort of go down and just follow the links and, and show the transaction summary. And what this is now is sort of creating an, an, an ad hoc query automatically that will provide us that information. I think this has been quite useful at ASRA, hasn't it? Because all our templates and um, have guaranteed drill down, so yes. you can always drill down. Um, well, obviously, we don't want to labour the point today, but um, you could yeah. actually go as far back as the scanned image um, relating yeah. to an actual payables invoice. Um, yeah. So you can step right through your entire process. I think I think that, that that's correct, Jules. Because what you can see now on the screen is that eleven thousand seven hundred nineteen pound. You can see first of all, one journal's gone in for three hundred sixty four pound. And then you can see a breakdown of all the respective invoices that make that amount. And if we wanted to now, we could sort of drill down right down to accounts payable invoice and get further details. Um, but on that note, we'll sort of quickly jump on to uh, another query. And from from my perspective is obviously one thing I've gone into now is accounts receivable. And what you can see is you can see uh, the top 10 customers and, and you can run this for a range of periods. You can run this for a month, etc. This is a report that we've set up. And obviously this allows you to sort of see which customers we've had, the amount due, the amount remaining, and the proportion and paid, obviously that's using the calculation engine. Yeah. And and one thing to note is obviously we've excluded, when you can see the toolbar there, I've excluded a number of our internal customers, Azra, LAS, etc. Yeah. I mean, what, what's what's great with what you've got on the screen at the moment, um, obviously when we when we come and speak to people that use Oracle, some of their frustrations are the fact that they, they it's not very easy to navigate around. So yeah. you've still got your general ledger yes. report open you could yeah. flick to. You've got two reports open at the bottom of the screen. So from an ease of navigation, there's nothing more frustrating when you're in the middle of doing something and somebody wants you to run a, a query over accounts payable and you have to close yeah. out of everything. Yeah, you're scribbling down. numbers down, True. whereas... Here you can come back to wherever you started at any point in time. So yeah. you know. That's so basically, we look at sort of Insight and Limited as the as the one stop shop. Basically, you've got sort of a, a, a number of queries open all across our sub ledgers, be it general ledger, accounts payable, accounts receivable, purchasing. You can sort of run them instantaneously and and, and basically uh, tab across from between 
or each of them. Yeah, I think when I was talking to the lady at work for you when I came in last week, one of the things she said that people never knew or didn't often know, sometimes, did you go to a Discover report or did you go to an FSG report for certain information? Mm. But by having Insight Unlimited as a one-stop shop, yeah. um, there's no confusion now, no, is there? No, not at all, not at all. Um, obviously, this is obviously top 10 customers and, and one of all the accountants who are sort of there and one of the sort of reports that they'll always, always be asked for is the age debtors report. <laughs> and, and, and this is a report which is very, very difficult to produce and maintain within Oracle Financials. So obviously, this was when we sort of moved across to um, uh, Insight Unlimited. This is a key report that we wanted from day one and, and it's there as one of the standard reports. And basically for the age debtors report, you can run this for uh, the group, uh, uh, one company or a department or a scheme, etc. And what you can see is this report's been run as, as of today, which is at the top. And basically when it comes to year end, an auditor comes in, basically they want to see the report as at year end. So I just want to basically show you the ease, how you can produce that. So obviously we just go to the date and we'll flip back. Our year end is the 31st of March. So we just click 31st of March. And we basically would we'll just run this report. And this is just going to unpick all the transactions to as they were on the 31st of March. So you can run an as of at any point in time, which is like you say, brilliant when the auditors come in if you haven't actually saved something. It is obviously what you can see is you can see the, the time it took. It took eight, just, just over eight and a half seconds at the bottom. You always see the, the seconds it takes to generate a report. And, and what you can see is here, you've got all the customers breakdown across the left hand side. You can see the amount due, the amount outstanding. And basically, uh, you can see the different aging buckets. So if you've got 1 to 30 days, 31 to 60, 61 to 90, etc. etc. And what I was going to say to you, if we wanted to, we could see even a further bigger breakdown. Say we take ASRA, Greater London Housing Association, as an instance, and we can click on there. And basically, what we can do, we can sort of follow the links back and we can click on the invoice details so basically you can see the 719,000 on the screen the amount that's outstanding and basically we can see a breakdown by invoice for that total amount so if you, if you want to sort of chase the debt up etc or, or send the respective uh, emails you could do this so basically that link query has directly sort of filtered down now which I'm just refreshing and this will give us a complete breakdown for that amount so this will give you the transaction number which you can see transaction date which is invoice date due date original amount and amount outstanding so basically this is your complete breakdown so so obviously this is just uh, the tip of the iceberg of what reports that I've saw for general ledger accounts receivable but from from a user and a, and a, and a head of systems and management accounts I can say that um, basically this is opened up our eyes yeah I mean I think it was good that during the proof of concept we, we sat and actually created those in front of you There's, there was no mystery to what we'd done um, but just just to round off, um, how how do you think Insight Unlimited has, has changed the business um, at Asra Housing Group? Well, so, so one of the sort of things that sort of point out is the organisation and the finance firm saw the benefits from day one, and obviously having worked in the Oracle field for in excess of ten years, I can say this is one of the best investments that I've made because basically the return on investment it's it's paid for itself many times over within the first year it's made that we've got a consistent complete reporting system for fi for financials basically we've got the one system which is insight limited there's no fsg or discover reports being used basically all the inquiries etc are all produced from insight limited and it's increased visibility for the business everybody's aware from right direct from director at board level all the way down to sort of user level that basically the data within Oracle is correct and, it, and it's because it's, it's opened it all out to everybody now and, and another thing is you can't put a value on employee and customer satisfaction basically my team feel empowered finance feel empowered to deal with their queries because sometimes when you sort of put undue pressure on staff who are saying oh can, can we have this report and they're not uh, ability they can't deliver it because basically the system's not there this has basically given them the sort of big big push up now basically they're all sort of happy even that their sort of uh, motivation levels have increased and basically everybody within the business sees oracle in a better light or, or off the back of implementing insight limited and obviously finance it sort of became it's made us a, a, a even higher sort of value function now and and just reiterating that basically it's one of the best investments that as an organization we've made and and this has been sort of proven 
by sort of board etc cetera, etc cetera, sort of uh, sort of giving it the green light that's excellent that's really good feedback and like you say i think it all stems from the fact that you had buy in from the business at day one mm -hmm. when we did the yeah. demonstration on your data yeah. everyone was on everyone was on board um so for the people on the call today that don't really know a lot about us, um, we've got 750 customers um, around the world and the year before last we won um, the most innovative product of the year um, from the Oracle user group which is obviously a really high accolade for us because there are huge amounts of reporting tools um, that run on Oracle. So for us to get that validation of what, of what we've produced at InsightSoftware.com was absolutely brilliant. So I think Amy just has one last polling question before we actually finish today That's right, and then yes. we'll, we'll open up the questions. So last question everyone, um, would you like to see Insight Unlimited over your live data? So a couple of seconds to answer that. Oh but great, lovely, lovely results, thank you everyone. Great, okay, thank you very much. Um, just why, if anybody wants to, I'm just going to leave my details on the screen, so if anybody wants to drop me an email or give me a call to, to sort out, if you do want to see this on your data, that would be fantastic. Um, but just to finish up, if anybody's got any questions, um, if they can type them into um, their panel and we, we'll, we'll take those now for the remaining few minutes. That's right, and Jules, a couple have come in actually during Have the webinar. Been? Yeah, so um, first one, um, does a good one actually? Does Insight run over both 11i and R12? Yes, yes, it does. Um, we are, we are an, an Oracle Gold partner, um, and as such, we we um, run over all versions of Oracle. Um, actually, quite a good question, Amy, because um, next month we're actually running a webinar with one of our existing customers, Labbrooks, to actually talk about how they um, used Insight to go from 11 to 12 and how it helped their project. So. Uh, great, whoever asked that one. Okay, um, second question. Um, this is for you, Bal. Um, who replaced the FSG and Disco reports within Azra Housing Group? Was no. it just you, or did you have a team of people to help you? Or basically, the users replaced them themselves. What? So, what, so basically, what we wanted from day one is we wanted to empower all the users. So it's not one of those things that I become a bottleneck again. All the eleven reporting users all attended the same reporting uh, sort of training, and everybody created recreated their own reports. Great, lovely. Excellent. Um, third question. Oh, that's a good one. Um, so, so Bal, you were saying that um, you know you upgraded to R12, and you know the company invested in, in this upgrade, and they were like, you know, what what else do you want from us? So how how else did how did you get the buy-in from the business for a reporting tool when you'd already had that investment in R12? I think basically, sort of when you look at the the initial investment that you make into Oracle. And, and, and the amount that you have to invest in to uh, implement Insight Unlimited, it, it, it's, it's a very marginal cost. Yeah. And, and, and when you look at the benefits associated with that, that's where straight away, when you look at any other sort of system implementation, you look at big, big costs, but, but obviously the, the competitively priced Insight Unlimited made it a no-brainer, basically. Okay, great. Um, next question. Um, did you consider purchasing OBIE? And if you did, why didn't you go with it? Um, can I say yes we did but basically anyone that's sort of seen OBIE it's great but that's when the costs um, it's put it this way it's it's big <laughs> so so it, to, be, to be honest from day one for us OBE was was uh, definitely a no-no because basically the cost and associated maintenance etc were, were, were impossible for us to sort of justify okay lovely um, next question um, can the reports be formatted using the software? Yes, yes. absolutely. Yeah, yeah. We only could touch the uh, tip of the iceberg today, right. but we you can do um, most formatting like you could in, say, a Microsoft Excel product. Um, you can do conditional formatting, say, if you want to highlight variances. Um, you can traffic light those. Um, there's, there's there's huge amounts of potential when it comes to formatting. So if you want to actually push this information out to the business, you wouldn't then have to take it to another application to actually tweak it. You can produce your reports as you want them to look. Okay, lovely. Um, just quickly, does it leverage the Oracle Apps security? Very good yes. point. Yes, it does. And that was key for you, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, it is. Basically, all the uh, sign-on, etc. is all within um, Oracle. So basically, whatever... Uh, responsibilities you have access to within Oracle Financials that is exactly the same thing that you'll have within um, um, Insight Unlimited. Yeah, so you log into Insight Unlimited with your Oracle username and that's yeah. how we, we read that but that, that, that that's key for us because 
um, it's if you if you're going to set up security in Oracle, you want whatever you're going to use for reporting to adhere to that, yeah, don't you? Yeah. Okay, and I have one t time for one final question. Do you have to build all reports from scratch, or do some come out of the box? Right. No. Um, do you want to just flip? No. Just we're just going to flip back into Insight to answer that last question. Um, if if Bal just hits new now, um, what will what we'll see is a list of, um, in each of the module areas, um, there are a list of predefined templates. So no matter where you are, you've always got a starting point. And all the three reports that we've shown you today all originated from, from one of those templates. So yeah. um, you're never going to be, it's not like discovering when you're going to start with a blank piece of paper. Um, this mm -hmm. reads all your underlying yeah. data structure and, and that enables it to take it from outside of an IT function to give it to accountants that aren't technical and don't know how the tables yeah. talk to each other. Very true. Basically, like the age debtors report that we showed you, that is a, a standard it's report. It's standard, yeah. 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 And obviously, when somebody talked about uh, customising it, formatting it, you can take a standard report and customise it, etc., however you wish. That's great. great. Lovely. I think we're just about out of time now. A couple more questions that have come in, so we will follow up with you um, after the webinar. Um, and the webinar um, has been recorded today, so it will be distributed to all our attendees. Um, so thank you very, very much, Julie and Bauer, for, for joining us today, presenting no on this webinar. Um, and I hope to see you on the next InsightSoftware.com webinar. Thank you very much, everyone. Thanks for joining us. Thank, thank you, you very much. Bye-bye.